they split them into six sections. So they made a split cane. The beauty with split cane is that it's not a wood, it's a reed. The beauty with that is that the fibres are going all the way up the rod. So it lent itself to actually making a better fishing rod. Put the two in the same hands, have a look at the action. They're exactly the same. They're all working all the way through, right? But a piece of reed is living and breathing. Once you've topped it, dry it. Starts drying out. If you've got a, what, a split cane at home, by all means go fish with it, but never store it in your house because central heating kills split cane rod because it actually dries the rod out. The other thing is, if you've got an old split cane rod and it's in the original cloth case, there'll be a loop on the top of it. That is designed to hook it on a nail and hang the rod. Do not throw the rod in the corner of the room because it'll warp. But reed is living and breathing, so that is to let the angler down after 20, 25 years. So, this material came onto the scene. Now this, I asked someone just earlier, what was it? We had uh, wood, we had cork, we had everything, right? Give you an idea, this used to be in that position throughout its whole life. It was actually on a vehicle. They were going into war. It was tank aerial. And that's what they used to do. They used to cut the tank aerial off and make fishing rods out of tank aerials. Then all cocks actually built tubular steel rod. Now, you would think that tubular steel would last forever. This is the only tubular steel fly rod I have found in the last 40 years. Tubular, tubular steel spinning rods, you'll find a million of them. Fly rods, for some reason, they didn't last because if you pinch the tubular steel, it, it's gone, it's finished. But, have a look at the three of them working. Or look at what we call the action. Look at them working. They're working exactly the same. Tip, middle and right down into my hand. So that was it. And then, suddenly, after that, this wonderful new material came onto the scene. This was called glass fibre. Now when glass fibre came onto the scene, everybody went, wow! Fishing rods can't get any better. These are brilliant. The material was stronger. It was lighter. What it meant then, it, the rods were manufactured in longer lengths. Ten foot. 11 foot for a single handed fly rod. Now put the three in the same hands. See the brown ones. Every one of them working tip middle down to my hand. Look at the red one. What you'll actually see is only half the fishing rods working. So the rods were getting lighter. They were getting longer. But we're actually using less of the fishing rod. But glass fiber, bless its soul, was never developed fully. Because as a byproduct of a space race, onto the scene came this new wonderful material. It was called carbon fiber. Now when carbon fiber came onto the scene, wow, materials were a lot lighter, a lot stronger. Rods, 10 foot, 11 foot. And even I've seen 12 foot single-handed fly rods. Please don't go after, on a single-handed rod, don't go over 10 foot because it's too much pressure. However, the one thing that happened when carbon fiber started to come on the scene, it now became dangerous to fish. Carbon fibre is a conductor. Now, if any of you have fished before, and just before a lightning storm is about to hit, something happens. The static electricity in the air affects the insects. And when the inf insects start moving, obviously the fish start moving and they start feeding. People think that the, the electricity in the air affects the fish. No, it affects the insects, which then turn the fish on to feed. The problem is, if you're a fisherman and you're fishing and you see a fish rise, well obviously you're going to put the fly on the fish's head. The problem is you're going to maybe do another one. The problem is you might do your last cast. <laughs> yeah, right? Lightning comes down. First thing it's going to find is this nine and a half foot lightning conductor I'm holding in the air. The second thing that's going to have, it's going to find is actually the idiot underneath holding it. And please, if there is a lightning storm, put it down. Because we have lost fly fishermen. They've gone for that last cast. Lightning's come down, crack them, and he's gone. So please don't do that. Then, glass fi uh, carbon fibre, then we had boron, then we had graphite. To be honest with you, there's not a lot of difference. Right, slightly different material. I think fishing companies saw the sales of fishing rods going down and they thought, oh, we'll create this new material. And you know, all of you fishermen, you're gullible. You think, oh yeah, new material, I'll catch more fish. Not a lot of difference. But then we had titanium. Now, anybody knows anything about titanium? What they did with titanium? You can't roll titanium. So what do they do? They got carbon cloth. They wove the titanium into the carbon cloth, hold it back together again. So they made a titanium rod. But if you look at them, 
the four, uh, yeah, the four on my left hand, very, very similar. The action very similar. The three brown ones in my right hand are very slow right through. So again, rods like the longer, but actually using less of the fishing rod. So, that's the history of the rod up to date. Now, I'm going to put you in a fishing situation. This is a fishing situation I found myself about 20 years ago. Just imagine this. You've gone out fishing, right? You started fishing and you were keen. You were out in the water at 8 o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock comes and goes. 10 o'clock comes and goes. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. 